Hello fellow Malaysians, this is Matthias Chang once again. This is part two of what I had presented earlier about how to counter propaganda, the lies of the Nazi regime. In this part two, I want to draw your attention certain facts of the Nazi regime's criminality. All right? Now, in the past, Najib and his mouthpieces, Sadiq Kruak and other ministers, have attacked Wall Street Journal as having distorted lie about the true nature of the what MDB kleptocracy investigation and that whatever facts they have published are unsubstantiated, distortion and what have you. But the Nazi regime and their propaganda machinery have failed to disclose to all of you that equally renowned newspaper, New York Times, have also made pronouncements about the findings and investigations of the DOJ's complaint against 1MDB and all those properties which were purchased as a result of monies diverted from 1MDB into the personal account of Joe Low and then retransferred to Rizal Aziz, the Arabs, and thereafter to the personal account of the Najib regime and to himself personally. This is a article entitled Justice Department rejects account of how Malaysia's leader acquired millions by Richard Paddock of the New York Times. Okay? So therefore, New York Times corroborates and substantiates further the stance taken by the Wall Street Journal. In that article, okay, the New York Times stated categorically, a United States Justice Department complaint filed in the federal court this week directly contradicts repeated assertions by the Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak about the origins and purpose of hundreds of millions of dollars that ended up in his personal account. While Mr. Najib and other Malaysian officials have insisted that the money was a gift from an unidentified Saudi donor, the Justice Department said that it was stolen from the Malaysian government investment fund that Mr. Najib oversaw. Mr. Najib has said he never received any money from the fund. So, New York Times has stated categorically, after analyzing all the evidence, that the evidence contradicts the assertion by Prime Minister that the money he received in his personal account was a donation from an Arab. It's in fact money diverted from what MDB. The article went on to say the court filing one of several complaints filed in a federal money laundering investigation provides the first official public documentation of transactions that challenge Mr. Nudge's version of events in a scandal that has battered his government for the past year. All right, let's pause here for a while. So here you have a very categorical statement from New York Times that whatever Najib and his cabal have stated with regard to the money in his personal account is a pack of lies and contradicted by the detailed investigation and evidence that was brought to court in America. And in my previous address last week, I informed all of you that the lawyers for Rick Granite Pictures, which produced the film Wolf of Wall Street, have consented to an order as a result of a joint application between DOJ 
and the Lords of Red Granite to agree that the monies that promoted, that was used to promote the film and produce the film, World of Wall Street were monies derived from and traceable to what MDB by the Gusta account controlled by Joe Lo, which in turn transferred to result Aziz, the stepson of the Prime Minister. More importantly, many lawyers, many analysis in Malaysia have highlighted in the past few months the DOJ complaint filed in California consisting of 136 pages of evidence which was in the last page verified by the FBI officials that investigated the crimes who himself verified that every paragraph every fact, every assertion in the 136 pages of complaint was sourced from public documents, from the US government, from other sources, other investigations by other investigating agencies. So, it's very important. All right, these are facts, conclusive facts. But more importantly, and next to the complaint, which many lawyers and analysts have overlooked, is actually three attachment A, B, C. A, attachment A is a summary of all the properties that will be the subject for feature of the DOJ action. Attachment B, more importantly, is what were the laws, Malaysian laws, that were contravened by what MDB and the criminal elements over and above the money laundering, the racketeering laws, the corruption laws that were contravened in the United States of America, U.S. laws. And I can see the laws of the United Arab Emirates. For the purpose of this session, this address, I want to highlight to you why the DOJ took great pains as a separate attachment to the complaint that their action is not only grounded on US laws but was also grounded on Malaysian laws yet to today the police led by the IGP have yet to complete investigations when so many crimes have been committed and yet the Attorney General has not been fit to charge anyone for the crimes of money laundering, corruption and fraud even though the provisions of criminal law is clear cut so what we'll do now and I hope this will also be content and information which you can use in your counter propaganda against the government's machinery you may not be a lawyer, it doesn't matter uh, what I want you to do is when you watch this video speech when you come across what I'm going to show to you in the next few minutes write down carefully word for word because the sections the criminal provisions speak for itself it's self-explanatory if people ask you what offences has Najib, Jolo and the board of directors and the officials of what MDB has committed, just quote them word for word. Don't need to explain, okay? It's in simple English. So, the first attachment B, this is from the actual DGO complaint. Alright? I won't say anything. I want you now to focus on the words and read them out slowly. Alright? The first paragraph. Read slowly. Now, I want you to read 
the second paragraph. Okay? The next offense. Read slowly. Because I want you to understand. Now we go to the last paragraph of this page. Once again, focus on these words. They are very important. These are the sections of the penal code which Najib and Skabai's contravene. Now, next section, section 409 of the penal code. Once again, I urge you to focus and read slowly. You don't have to be a lawyer to understand. The words are self-explanatory. We now go to the next paragraph. Same section, 409B. You got it? Now we go to the next paragraph. Once again, take your time, focus it, copy it, and pass on to your friends. Next section is section 418. Read carefully, once again. Next paragraph. Remember, I want all of you to take down in writing as you watch this video speech. Reproduce it, photostat it, and pass on to your friends and families. Next paragraph, okay? You don't need to be a lawyer to know what offences have been committed. These are the offences relied upon by the DOJ of America, okay? And then, following the last page, the previous page, these are the explanation. Continuation uh, of the last page. You got it? Good. There's also in this page illustration examples how the offense is committed. And now, at the bottom, can you see? Huh? You will notice the bottom of that page are uh, the provisions of offences under the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Act of 219, 2016 and 17. And finally, the last section of the MACC Act, section 23. Read carefully. So now, having read all the relevant sections of Penal Code and the MACC Act, we have asked a simple question, isn't it? To the IGP, to the Attorney General, have investigations been conducted along these lines to show how and when 
these offenses have been committed. If they can't reply, something's very wrong, isn't it? Because the DOJ, they are lawyers, they are prosecutors, and they say these are the offenses that have been committed based on the evidence and facts they have collected. And if the AG or the IGB says no such offense has been committed, I think and I believe we, the riot, have every right to demand an explanation why they say all these offenses have not been committed. If such offenses have not been committed, Malaysian offenses, under Malaysian law, the penal code, as well as the provisions of MACC Act, as well as the US laws in America, 18 USC 1956, section 1956, 1961 to 1968. If no offense were committed, then the trillion dollar question is why did the lawyer for Rick Granite, for which Rizal Aziz is the chairman, shareholder, director of the Rick Granite Pictures Company, for his assets have been seized and the proceeds are now segregated into a, a special account. Why did those lawyers submit a joint application, joint application, and enter into a consent order that those monies are to be frozen and collected in a segregated account? If no offense has been committed, does it make sense then? Surely, if no offense is committed, they will fight tooth and nail to ensure those money will be not be frozen. But more importantly, which I drew to your attention in my previous address, that the lawyer has even considered the lawyers of Rick Granite. Not only are the proceeds from the film, the whole Wall Street, being segregated and frozen. Another film, Friends of the Kid, was also frozen and proceeds segregated because there was evidence to show that the monies that produced the second film also came from 1MDB. This is a concession by the lawyers for Rick Granite Pictures, which at that time, DOJ was aware. So given all these facts, please, Saudara Saudari, help all of us who are now in the front lines, who are trying to form a grand coalition to oust the person national, that we need everyone to volunteer to do this propaganda, to do this counter-propaganda. You have always asked me, what can we do? We don't have the time or the resources to go out to battle the Najib regime. We are not politicians. We are not party members. My reply has always been, do the bare minimum. Do the bare minimum. You don't even have to go out to the public. If what you do first is to share and educate each and every member of your family, if all of them are well versed, in all these facts, that's enough. Because they in turn have a duty, responsibility to then tell their friends and other relatives, cousins, whatever. This will snowball into a political tsunami. On that basis, we will succeed because the lies perpetrated on the mainstream media on television, TV1, TV2, TV3, and TV7, all, all those best media cannot be effective to counter this kind of what we call guerrilla warfare, strategy and tactics in counter propaganda. So, once again, I appeal to all of you, all right, the only way you can persist and have the discipline to move forward 
to do this Herculean task is to surrender to the will of God, have absolute faith that He will protect us, defend us, and guide us under all circumstances. In the face of all enemies and adversities, and grant us victory. God willing, He will be soon. And with that, I conclude part two of this address, and I hope you will replicate and send out to all your friends via WhatsApp, email, or whatever way you want to, to Twitter, whatever. Once again, thank you, and have a good day.